Welcome everybody to our water cooling conversion project here. We're going to be transferring everything from the Fractal Arc MIDI R2 into the Fractal Design Define S, which is uh, designed for water cooling. As you can see, there's no hard drive bays or five and a quarter inch bays at the top for DVD drives or anything like that to maximize the space efficiency for water cooling components. Speaking of water cooling components, here we have all the bits and pieces. We are going to be using the EK Coolant Pastel Red Concentrate, which will uh, go with our build really nicely. Next up, we have got here our GTX Strix 980Ti water blocks, two of them for the uh, 980Ti cards and the back plates as well, which will give it a nice look and help with a fraction of cooling. We've got the terminal dual serial three slot connector that connects two cards together. The EK Evo Supremacy water block in black, which will go with the whole blackout theme. The uh, X-Res 140 Revo D5 PW PWM pump, um, which will be nice. It comes with the reservoir and everything. Um, we even got here the uh, DIY kit for the tube bending with all the inner tubes and the hacksaw and everything all in there built in to the kit which is really nice. We have a whole pile of fittings from um, all the connectors that we need to connect the tubes and uh, the right angles. We've got our PETG tubing which is the 10-12 millimeter uh, tubing there. Also, we have here our two reservoirs. We've got the dual 240 and the triple 360 PE edition from uh, EK, which look really nice and should fit nicely in the case. And last of all, we've got our EK uh, Vada fans, the 2200 RPM ones, all black. So I think the whole thing is going to look really, really nice together. This is everything together, and uh, let's start building. First of all, we are going to be flushing our radiators. So we have got here our distilled water, which is what we're going to need to uh, clean everything out because it hasn't got any ions or anything in there. So uh, it won't uh, pick up any bits and pieces that uh, or, or, you know, the conductivity and stuff like that. So we're going to pop off the cap here and uh, start filling it up. So the reason you want to uh, flush out your radiators, even though the EK radiators do um, do already come pre-flushed, best to be uh, safe and uh, flush them all out so there's no any gunk or, or anything like that in there and, uh, and it keeps everything clean because otherwise you start your loop and all that crud is going to be in your loop and all your other components. So we're going to tip in our distilled water here and uh, let it fill up. Let it get into all the crevices there. And uh, then what we can do is start shaking it all about to uh, to make sure it grabs all the gunk in the, uh, in the system and uh, can uh, get it flushed out. And we're going to tip it out here into this clear glass uh, glass container just so you can see what comes out of it and uh, and if there is anything in there that uh, we uh, were able to get out of the radiator. And here we go. And taking the cap off here will help both sides of the radiator uh, get that water out quicker. And a little bit of water inside is not, not a bad thing because there's going to be water in there anyway. Now, if we take a look here, we can actually see what was inside the radiator and uh, what we're clearing out. 
as you can see there's some uh, little floaty bits in there because this water was perfectly pure before and that what was that's what was in our radiator uh, it's not a lot but uh, if we can get it as clean as possible it's it's uh, better off for our loop in the long term now we've got our 360 radiator here we're basically going to do exactly the same thing and I'm going to speed this one up here just so you don't get too bored and we're going to fill this one up the same way obviously it's a bigger radiator so it um, takes more water but uh, once we get this one filled we'll shake it all about and uh, we'll be able to see what comes out of the 360. Now off camera I did uh, flush the radiators three four times just to make sure it was uh, totally clean and uh, no gunk was in there and this is what we uh, ended up getting out of the uh, first run of the uh, 360 radiator. Now here we are going to start pulling apart the old system and we're going to time lapse this one so that uh, it doesn't get too boring uh, once we <laughs> take out these these cables here um, because they are really really hard to uh, disconnect for some reason those connectors are, are pretty tough they're really on there but that's all right we get this one pulled apart and we will see the time lapse right about now And done. Everything's out of the case. You can see here all our power cables and connectors. We've got our uh, hard drives here. We've got the four terabyte and the two SSDs, our motherboard with CPU and RAM. And uh, we will clean that up before we obviously install everything. The uh, H100i by Corsair AIO, the back case fan, which is the uh, 140. We've got the AX1200i power supply, the uh, ROG SLI bridge and the two beasts which are the 980Ti Strix editions which are going to be also water cooled it's going to be uh, really really nice now it's time to dust everything off and uh, start uh, putting everything together so first of all we've got our can of compressed air and uh, we're going to start uh, spraying off the dust here with the but this one here it just helps get all the little bits and pieces off. Um, it actually was quite stubborn to uh, to take the uh, the dust off. It's a very very fine dust, and uh, even with this compressed air, uh, in the end, I found that uh, you had just had to use a a lint free you know cloth to uh, help get off the uh, the dust because uh, it just really really stuck on there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the motherboard and then here we have the uh, one of the Strix 980 Ti's you can see the dust on the back plate only so much dust comes off with this compressed air and in the end we have to just wipe it off ourselves but the majority comes off and uh, and there you have it guys so that's part one of the uh, water cooling video I'm not sure how many parts this is gonna have but uh, I'll start. I'll try to put them all into about 10 minute segments so it's uh, reasonably easy to watch and uh, stay tuned for the next video because uh, we will continue on with our water cooling project. If you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment down below if there's anything that you wish to see or, or talked about a little bit more. Have a great day.